Welcome to the Skies Over Longmont. I'm staff astronomer John Ensworth for Longmont Public Media and the Cherrywood Observatory, July 2020. In the news, comets. Yep, this is a repeat from last month. No, we had Comet Swan and Comet Atlas. Both, we were hoping, we would put on a nice show. They did not. They pretty much fizzled out. One broke up. But we have new comets. We have Comet Neowise. Neowise is derived from NASA's Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. That is a mouthful. This comet will be closest to the sun on July 3rd, then be heading out north of the plane of the solar system. In the morning sky, July 7th, it'll appear not too far from where the sun will come up and then skirt the horizon, heading ever further northward, but never getting too far out of the glare in the morning. But if you have a telescope, you know where to look. This could be a good one, putting on a nice show with a pretty good tail. There's an early image of it. Then we have Comet Lemon. This is actually named after Mount Lemon Observatory in Arizona. Okay, that is its discovery image. This comet also probably will put on a good show with a visible tail and binoculars or a telescope. Will be heading northward as well, but in the evening sky after sunset, going between Leo and Virgo here. Taking a look at the horizon over the month, it'll be tracking deeper into the nighttime sky. It'll be better later in July and it'll be better in August. So, something to look forward to. This could be a fun one to look at with binoculars or maybe even catch naked eye. We'll see what it does. Astronomers and astrophysicists have officially declared that black holes do have a light ring around them. If there's material falling in, heating up, you get an accretion disk around the black hole. The way gravity bends space and time, you get an image of the disk from the backside bent around to you, appearing to be above, and the underside of that disk bent around towards you below. This was modeled and it showed up in the movie Interstellar. First visualized it, took a lot of computational time to solve Einstein's general relativity equations for this. Then we got the image of M87's black hole region. We see it looks very similar. They have colored it red also, but it is a ring-like, a darker shadow in the center. The orientation of the black hole in M87 is almost face on. So we're almost looking down from above. There's a jet of material shooting out. Otherwise, we would see that horizontal belt in front of the black hole. But confirmation that the physics that Einstein figured out and then has been further investigated since are correct. This is a strange one. Long achromatic, meaning the colors don't change, flare from a black hole merger was seen. We have gravitational detectors looking for such violent things shaking space-time when they collide. An unconfirmed event with that big long name there, seen at the LIGO and Virgo Gravitational Observatories. This is their 21st event that they've investigated. Astronomers looked for an accompanying light source with that and found it in an active galaxy with this big long name. Active galactic nuclei are ones with black holes in the center, gobbling up stars and gas and dust and they have very violent um, jets of material shooting out. They think occurred in this case is two black holes that were roughly stellar size orbiting in the dust disk of the galactic black hole in the background here merged. They got a new velocity as a single combined object and spent about a month shooting out of the gas and dust plowing through it making a a tremendous amount of light and being able to be seen from a very distant galaxy. 
There's other possible explanations for the phenomena, but this is what seems to match all the data points well. All right, let's move on to big star parties. And the big star parties are still having a rough time getting going. The Nebraska Star Party hung on for a couple months and then finally has been canceled. Alcon, Albuquerque, Table Mountain, and Washington, the Oregon Star Party all canceled for July as well. Off into August and September, the Oregon Star Party, Stella Thing, Almost Heaven, Summer Star Party, Merit Star Quest, Main Star Party are all canceled. The Northern Knights Star Festival in Palisade, New Mexico, on August 18 to 24, is still on. The Thebeca and Wood Buffalo Dark Sky Festival in the Northwest Territories of Canada, you gotta go way up there, Fort Smith, is considering having a smaller festival, so check out their website for details if you can travel that far away. And the Okie Tech Star Party, the next one that's big and close to Colorado, is in Kenton, Oklahoma at the very end of the Panhandle. September 11th to 19th is still on. They will make the call by August 11th as to whether that one will remain. It's being watched. Check out skyandtelescope.org. Under astronomy news, they have a list, frequently updated, keeping track of the star party status. Our Astronomy 101 lesson for this month is aphelion. The orbit of the Earth and all the planets and moons around planets are never perfect circles. Aphelion is the point in the ellipse farthest from the Sun. Perihelion is the closest. This is extremely exaggerated. This is not how our planetary orbit looks. In fact, this is more accurate. It looks like a really good circle to me, but the difference between aphelion and perihelion is about 3.1 million miles. So yes, the Earth is closer and further from the Sun by over 3 million miles every six months. What you may not have known, and we'll probably get into this more in the future, we'll do a Astronomy 101 on what the seasons are, is that we are farthest from the Sun around July 5th. It's actually July 4th this year. And we are closest to the Sun around January 4th. It is very hot outside. We're going to see 100 degree temperatures out on the plains but we are farthest from the sun at the beginning of July. The distance from the sun is not responsible for the seasons. We'll get into what that is at a later time. Looking above your backyard, the moon this month, the night after whatever fireworks occur, July 5th, we have a full moon. It will be pretty out there that this weekend. July 13th will be the last quarter in the morning sky. July 20th is the new moon. And at the very end of July, in the first quarter moon, we'll be back in the evening sky. Taking a look at the planets. Things are finally starting to shift across the sky as we circle the sun. We are catching up with the outer planets. They orbit slower than we do. They have much larger orbits to circle as well. Right after sunset, in the early part of the month, there really isn't anything visible yet, except unless the moon is around. But Jupiter and Saturn will be up almost the entire night starting mid-month. So Jupiter will be up, rising as the sun sets, July 14th. Saturn will be doing the same July 20th. On either side of midnight, you have Jupiter and Saturn there all night long. Mars rises around midnight and is up for the rest of the evening. Neptune, which both Neptune and Uranus require at least binoculars, or a small telescope to know that you've seen them. But Neptune rises an hour before Mars, Uranus about an hour later. Taking a look at how the planets line up in the morning sky, here's mid-month at about 1 a.m. You'll see south is over here on the right side of the image. There's Jupiter, then Saturn. Low in the southeastern sky would be Neptune. Low in the east is Mars. And just coming up at 1 a.m. is Uranus. 
This red line is the plane of the solar system, kind of a flat disk that all the planets are rolling around like BBs on a plate around the sun. The blue line here is the Earth's equator up in the sky. In the pre-dawn sky, you'll see Jupiter and Saturn way down in the southwestern sky, getting ready to set as the sun rises. And then southern sky, you'll have Neptune. In the southeastern sky, you'll have Mars and Uranus. So here's Mars in the southeastern sky, 5 a.m. in the middle of the month. There's Uranus. Oh, here comes Venus. Venus will be in the morning sky, getting higher and higher each night as the month goes on. But if you get out early, you'll see a very bright planet over there. Mercury will be entering the morning sky by the end of the month, in the morning dawn glow. Here's Venus, a little bit north of east, at 5.18 a.m. at the very end of July. Here's Mercury just coming out of the glow. The sun this month, July 1st, sunrises at 5.35. By the end of the month, it's already drifted to 5.58. We're starting to lose our daylight. Sunset 8.33, backs up to 8.14 p.m. by the end of the month. The day goes from 14 hours 57 minutes in length to 14 hours 17 minutes. So we lose 40 minutes of daylight in July. And the altitude of the sun at local noon will drop from 72 degrees to 67 degrees. So it's still very high. July 4th, as I said earlier, is the aphelion, our greatest distance from the sun. And that specifically occurs at 5.35 a.m. Our feature object this month will be Jupiter itself. It's the king of the planets. It's the brightest planet in the sky throughout most of the night for most of the month. If you get a pair of binoculars out and look at Jupiter, you'll see probably a very bright planet face itself. And then you'll see these four dots being the Galilean moons, the four big moons. Ganymede is larger than the planet Mercury. In a small telescope, you'll probably get to see the equatorial bands. You might see the great red spot. In a telescope, the view is flipped upside down. The great red spot is in the southern hemisphere equatorial band, but it'll be up on top. Your Longmont Observing Challenge this month is to go find a constellation. We talked about Sagittarius and the teapot in the previous month, but now, going out an hour or two after sunset, looking into the eastern sky, you'll see Cygnus the Swan with the bright star Denim. We'll track around the other three constellations in what's called the Summer Triangle and put the Summer Triangle together throughout these summer month shows. So here's going out about 9 o'clock, just about 9 o'clock at night, looking east-northeast. You'll see the short stubby body of the swan, the long skinny neck. The star at the back end of the swan is called Deneb, which means back end of the animal. Back end of Leo the lion is Denebola. There's one wing going over here, one wing going over here. This is also known as the Northern Cross. You've heard of the Southern Cross. This is a much larger cross than that. Not quite as bright, maybe, but we got the top of the cross, cross, and bottom of the cross point over like that. Looking at the more fanciful pictures, this one looks like this. These are other constellation depictions, so artistic renderings. All right, take a look at astronomy events near Longmont. Well, a few things are available. July 16th. The Longmont Astronomical Society at 6.30 p.m. We'll have Pluto's Planetary Status by Hal Levinson. It will be done via Zoom. Check out longmontastro.org for that. July 25th would have been the Boulder County Parks and Open Space Star Party in Rabbit Mountain. Take a look at longmontastro.org for that. It would have been at 9 o'clock. Of course, it is canceled. Still not doing uh, group gatherings quite yet. Little Thompson Observatory and its third Friday of the month public nights are canceled through September. Take a look for updates at starkids.org as we go into the fall. Estes Park Memorial Observatory is 
remaining closed through the end of July, angelsabove.org for that. Northern Colorado Astronomical Society will have Bill Zuni. It looked like on their site the title was otherwise. I'm guessing that's a typo, but eh, I'm pretty in there. I'll give you the warning. But it looks like he's talking about an R Galaxy app. That'll be interesting. That'll be via webcast at nocoastro.org, July 2nd, 2026 15. I'm sure archived beyond that. I'm going to add a new segment right here at the end, giving you things to read, maybe apps to use. Sky and Telescope at skyandtelescope.org is a fantastic, slightly more technical astronomy magazine. They have an online version as well. Astronomy Magazine at astronomy.com is more general audience focused, and they also have an e-subscription as well as a delivered magazine. And I really like Space Weather at spaceweather.com. You can keep an eye on the sun and aurora and other notable things like comets in the sky, up to the minute, updated information at Space Weather. And next month, we will get into your favorite apps. I'm an iPhone, iPad person, but I'll be biased towards that. I can't verify that all the apps we'll talk about next month are also in Android, but pretty much they are. If you have any additions or corrections, contact me, johnensworth at gmail.com. This has been the Skies Over Longmont for July 2020. Keep looking up.